Okay, so today we're going to build a program that tells a riddle uh, to the user and lets them guess. And they can ask for hints, they can give up, and hopefully they'll get it right after enough hints. Um, so the first thing you want to do is look up some riddles. Um, I've looked up a couple here. Here's one I'm going to use. Uh, and next, we'll have our blank Python file. In order to make this work, we're going to need to give the user a chance to guess as many times as they want until they get it right. And what we should do is keep track of how many guesses they tried. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is make a variable. We'll call it guess equals zero. So we'll start with zero guesses. And now we'll make a forever loop. So until the user either gets it right or gives up, the computer is going to keep asking them for input. So we start by making this forever loop while true. And what that means is while true, oops, while true, double equals true. Now this statement is always going to be true. It's always going to be correct. So everything that happens after this point will happen forever until we explicitly tell it to break that loop. We'll get there in a second. So everything from this point forward, when I press enter, is going to be indented. So the first thing I need to do is sort of tell the user my riddle. So here's how I can do it. We're going to print the riddle. And let me go back and check it real quick. Hopefully I can copy and paste it. OK. Now. When we use print, we're just going to have the riddle print out. But after that, we need to give the user a chance to, um, to actually guess and type in what they think the answer is. So we use the function input in order to let the user type in answers. So we'll do answer equals input. Now, what I think we might even want to do before this is give the user a couple of options. So we'll do another print right underneath the first one. And we'll say, you can type your guess or type help one. We'll give them two hints, maybe help two or I give up. Hello. Now, what does this look like in action? Let's run it and see it. So we'll do run and run module, press OK, and we'll go to our desktop or wherever your folder is. Um, I'm going to call this one riddle and then my initials. And now what happens is it prints out the riddle. It prints out your instructions. I can guess something like candle, which is correct. But notice how it didn't end. I haven't added any conditions, right? Um, so it's just running infinitely. If you ever get stuck in an infinite loop in the shell, a keyboard shortcut you can use on Windows is Control C. And that is a keyboard interrupt. It just stops your forever loop because otherwise that would have gone on forever. So I can close that one up. Let's come back here. So I have three lines, right? Saying the riddle, asking them to type uh, help one, help two, or I give up or their guess. I collect whatever gets typed in here as the variable answer. So if when I type in candle or ladder or chair, it saves it inside of this variable answer. What I need to do is check that variable to see what's been typed in. So for example, I could do if answer double equals candle print you win and then break. When I run it this time, this will go on forever until, now notice how when I do help one, I'm not getting any hints yet, but when I type in candle, it says you win and these arrows tell me the program's over. So the forever loop was broken here. That's great, but we need to add a couple of conditions. So let's add a condition, L if, Answer double equals, oops, help one. So this is if our user 
is asking for a hint. So maybe we'll print, you know, um, I give light. Uh, let's try another one. We'll do LF answer. L equals help to. And you can make up your own hints, depending on what riddle you chose. Don't don't use hints that don't make sense. Um, okay. Those conditions should work. Um, we can test them out. Let's run it. So if I guess, let's say ladder, nothing happens. If I guess chair, okay, I'm stuck. I need help, so I can type help one. And I get a hint. If I type help two, I get my second hint. If I want to see my first hint again, you can type that every time, right? And then when I finally get candle, I win and the game is over. All right. I need to add a condition to give up. So I uh, use this instruction up here, I give up. So down here, L if answer double equals, we're going to make another condition for I give up. We're going to print the answer was handle. Now, you'll notice both when you get it right and when you give up, there's a break. So the break is going to break this forever loop. So when I type help one or ladder, chair, ladder again, okay, let's say I can't get it. If I answer candle, we know that the loop ends, but now when I type I give up, this should also end our loop. And it says the answer was candle. Okay. So we need one last condition. This is just if the user types in anything else. So when they guess ladder and chair, we should tell them something like try again. So now anything that isn't candle, help one, help two, or I give up, they'll get try again. Awesome. Remember at the very beginning, we were going to count the number of guesses the person took. Well, why don't we do that now? After we collect answer equals input, why don't we do guess plus equals one? What that does is it takes whatever guess is at, at the time that this line is run. So the, the first time it runs through guess is zero and it adds one to it. So the first time this runs through, guess will change from zero, add one to it, it will become one. Let's say you asked for help. It'll get to the end, come back to the beginning. You'll take another shot at it. It'll take guess, which was at one, and now it adds one to it, it becomes two. So every time you run through this loop, we get another guess. And at the end, we want to tell the user how many guesses they took. So we want to tell them when they win, how many guesses they took. So you win. And after that line, we can print this out. It took you, and we're going to add these together. So hold on one second. We're going to add a plus here and a plus there. Now in between those pluses, you might be thinking, well, this is easy. I just type the variable guess, but guess is a number. It's actually an integer. So an integer is any whole number, right? Um, if you try and add a letter or a string with an integer, like zero or one or two, like you try and add a plus three, it's going to give you an error. So instead of this being an integer, we can actually transform it. We can change the integer into a string. Here's how we do it. We just type str, the first three letters in string, and we put it around guess parentheses right around it. What this does is it takes the number, like let's say this was five, and what it will do is it'll turn it into five, like that. See, it puts quotes around the integer, essentially, and it turns it into a string, so these can all be added together. It, it, it took you plus five in quotes, plus guesses in quotes, and it can add them all together. So let's run it, let's see if it works. Uh, let's see, we'll guess ladder, chair, 
I'll ask for help. And in this game, I'm counting. When you ask for help, it counts as a guess. And now finally, when I type in candle, it took me five guesses. One, two, three, four, and I got on my fifth try. If you wanted to, you could make this line a little bit more um, flexible. So what do I mean by that? Let me run this one more time. If I type in, I think it's a candle, it's not going to get the answer, but I can actually fix that. Here's how I do it. Instead of writing if answer double equals candle, which is looking for the exact answer candle, we can do this. If candle in answer. What this means is if at any point you write the word candle inside of the answer, you'll win. So you could do the same for all the others, right? So you could do if I give up is in answer, for example. Actually, for I give up, here's another thing that might happen. Let me show you this. So first off, we want to see if that worked. So normally, you would need to type exactly candle. And last time, what we did was we tried, I think it's a candle. Am I right? There we go. See, it's recognizing the word candle is inside of our answer. Now, for I give up, Sometimes people type it like I give up, or they might type I give up, or they might do it a whole bunch of different ways. What we can do is we can make whatever they type in all uppercase or all lowercase letters so we can fix that. So for example, let's say I want to do it like this. I give up. I want to take whatever the user types in and make it all capitals. So I can do answer dot upper. Now, if the, if the user had typed in, you know, I give up like that, this line would actually take what they typed in, I give up, and make every single letter uppercase. So now, let's try this out. Let's run it. If I type in I give up like that, it'll still recognize I give up. 